Smith. Um, and he called me, I don't know, sometime during the planning of this conference, and we were trying to put together this, this small farm session and um, asked about what some of my experiences were making equipment recommendations for small animal enterprises. And um, really, uh, this is not research-based information. It's just something practical I want to share with you and then offer up this presentation for you to go out and use. Uh, if you work with equine groups, um, small acreage, ranchette type neighborhoods, a variety of audiences like that. I'm just going to pass along this, uh, this sort of outreach tool. So first and foremost, these are the smallest manure management pieces of equipment I could find. One uh, sixty-fourth scale there on the, uh, the Ertl. Uh, you'd be surprised. There's actually a lot of, uh, a lot of these toys out there with different manure, uh, manure implements. Um, Mike already defined the small farm spectrum, and really I'm limiting the next you know 15 minutes of discussion to small herd or flock enter enterprises, you know for profit, all the way down to the the hobby farms and and those sorts of things. You know when we talk about small APOs, they're using a lot of the conventional equipment that we're we're familiar with if if we work in nutrient management on a larger scale. They've got you know irrigation systems, bigger spreaders honey wagons and, you know, all the sort of standard equipment we're aware of. But really I'm looking at the small scale commercial production down to the, the hobby size. And just to reiterate a couple of the possible complications, likely these operations are also small acreage, not just small animal numbers, um, different sorts of neighbor relations possible, et cetera, possibly in mixed zoning areas. So at any rate, this is how I've, I've thought about emphasizing the, uh, the pieces of equipment I'll share with you. And it was really just like window shopping. Last couple of weeks, every afternoon, I'd go on eBay and Tractor Trader online and see what looked interesting for small farms. So I'm really going to focus on light duty uh, equipment for moving manure, handling manure in the dry form, light duty composting equipment, um, thinking about small acreage issues, um, and the examples are just based on me dinking around on the internet and then also dealing with a lot of these sort of operations, uh, particularly in two or three mountain valleys around Montana where it's, it's not commercial production, it's, it's hobby farms and ranchettes. So you can do a lot with a pitchfork and wheelbarrow, but what next, right? This is, you're going to need some power equipment even on a small farm. You get more than two or three horses or a small flock of sheep or goats or something, you're not just going to handle it uh, with elbow grease. So um, when I work with small farm clients, from the hobby folks on up to people getting into uh, you know, small for-profit meat or milk sort of operations, think about what, you know, what are the maximum power needs you might have. So think about your chores. Think about your piece of property. Um, think about the type of implements you may want to accomplish different tasks and then choose your equipment accordingly to get the most bang for your buck out of the fewest amount of uh, you know, pieces of power equipment. So consider if you have need for power takeoff. Mike had a picture of the ground drive ATV pull spreader. I've got some in here and some, uh, some MSRP figures for you. Um, or do you need something a little bigger? Are you going to need that power takeoff? to drive some other implements or run a little bit bigger box spreader, for example. Um, attachment types and points, sort of uh, hitches and attachments you might need for implements that would, would fit, you know, whatever the type of operation you're consulting with. So that just leads into the different accessories, different chores you want to accomplish. And then finally, I think this is a big one. You know, a lot of um, the hobby farms and the small scale commercial they're new farmers. Uh, they might not have uh, had any sort of experience with power equipment. I think operator safety is a, a, a big deal to consider. So, you know, think about that in equipment selection. So to jump into some examples, um, compact tractors is really a good place to start. Um, all the brands uh, have them. I could have worn my case hat today, but I decided to put a little green in here as well. Um, about 20,000 bucks, power takeoff. Uh, you can run quite a few different types of implements off of it. You know, I think the key thing here is any of these, we talk about manure management, small farm equipment, a loader is, is the basic. I mean, that's what you're going to 
uh, get into once you have more than a few animals. There's a Kubota B series. This image is out of a small farm in the Okanagan Valley of uh, BC. Um, Eighteen to twenty-two thousand dollars new. There's some of the specs. Uh, you can get a backhoe attachment, the loader. Um, it's pretty handy. There's other other things you can do with that as well. Power once again, power takeoff. But a skid steer is really versatile. Um, I work with a lot of small horse operations, um, small-scale composters, sheep and goat dairies, and they do everything they need to do with a skid steer loader. Um, they're pretty darn safe, pretty darn easy to operate. Um, you can get other accessories for them, compost turners, tilling accessories, hay forks, um, a variety of things, but just the loader itself is pretty darn handy. Um, eBay, Tractor Trader, I tried to look at prices across the whole country and for 1990s era, smaller diesel, uh, you know, bobcats and skid steer loaders, you can find some for under $10,000. So that might not be cost prohibitive for, for small farms. Newer ones, you know, fifteen to 30000 for the, the smaller end of the line. Custom uh, attachments to pickup trucks, uh, dump beds are really handy for managing manure on small farms. Um, the uh, dump bed there that's attached to that, was that a GMC? Um, that is a little bit pricey, but uh, I found three or four old dump trucks online. You know, if it never really needs to leave the property, you need two or three thousand bucks for an old 1960s uh, dump truck, which works, works just fine. In fact, a, a young and uh, small scale uh, goat farmer I work with uses a small dump like that for a bunch of his manure and compost chores. So that's something we can recommend to our clients. Um, ATVs uh, and hybrid ATVs are becoming more useful for actual on farm chores. Um, around Bozeman, all the uh, landscape companies use them with some yard type implements and they uh, plow a lot of snow around shopping centers and and downtown with these so they push manure just as well. Um, of course you can get dump beds on those little hybrid guys and then different attachments for uh, your standard four-wheeler and such. Small-scale dump trailers, utility trailers to use with those ATVs. Uh, great for moving manure around, spreading those nutrients around, uh, getting to that proper storage area uh, wherever it may be. It's not adjacent to your stables and barns and such. And these are all, you know, affordable anywhere from 500 up to a couple thousand dollars, depending on the size and functionality. But you know, these are all things to pull behind four wheelers and little lawn tractors. Um, these images here. There's an old spreader on the smaller end. This uh, uh, image to uh, your left is um, a newer spreader on the small end uh, with a power takeoff. So you'd need one of those compact tractors with the PTO. But here's an example, um, about 40 plus cubic feet on a model like this. Um, several different brands had brand new models for $5,000 or less in that three to five range um, requiring a power takeoff. But then we get into a whole new realm and really I didn't see these start popping up uh, like this till about the last decade. I mean, it seemed like I saw antique ones. And of course the Amish, you know, We've heard a lot of Pennsylvania talks and such. They've had ground drive tools uh, for a long time, but these are readily available. Twenty-five hundred bucks, three thousand bucks. Pull up behind a heavy-duty lawnmower, ATV, uh, a variety of things. So I think these are really handy in uh, horse operations and, and small herd and flock enterprises. Just more similar pictures. This micro one here, really good for two to three horse stables and equine farms or businesses, 900 to $1,200. I think the price differentiation there was on uh, whether you got a painted model or what the metal finishing was on that. Um, that's the lower one to your right, of course. These are, uh, many of these are a live bottom, so it helps you know, pull the material back to the flails, spins the material out, so some sort of bar, bar chain drive in the bottom. A chain harrow can be really handy on these uh, small farms uh, for managing manure, um, especially horses. And I'm not going to make any claims about horse behavior, but you know you, they get those areas, they they're dunging areas, and they try and avoid them. And 
if you're already on a small acreage, that horse behavior limits your, your pasture, available pasture. And sometimes spreading around, uh, breaking up material uh, helps with that issue, the natural concentrating in your limited pasture for horses. Uh, or if you can only crudely apply manure, you can use something like this to, to break it up more. Um, to try and get a more uniform application on a small acreage, uh, just a lot of uses. Um, there can be some benefits there too to parasite control, pathogen management as you break up the, essentially that that habitat uh, for bugs and such. Now regarding compost turning on small farms, uh, this would be a, a bit extreme. This example here is a small end of the commercial scale, but this is a towable. Um, you know, windrow turner that we have up at our Ag Experiment Station in Haver. Um, this one actually has self-contained power. It's got to set its own engine on the back. Uh, some of these are PTO driven. Probably a little bit out of the range for the type of operations we're discussing today. Um, but there are other options, such as a skid steer attachment. This one just sold on uh, eBay, I think somewhere in the East Coast, Northeast, uh, for 3400 bucks used and uh, you see it's got hydraulic attachments there for the power source hooks onto the front of a skid steer loader looks like this and uh, so you can chop the compost it, it side discharges to build and start your windrow you know you come back again at your turning inter interval it mixes aerates side discharge again and you just move your windrow back and forth but once again you know that skid steer set up with tracks, but uh, very appropriate for size operations we're talking about. And then once again, just the small loader in general. Um, Martha, I think this is one of the small farms you work with here on the front range. Um, but my buddy Nate Brown at this goat dairy where we've done a lot of small farm demonstration and compost research, he does most of his compost management with his skid steer. And uh, he sells a lot of it commercially around the Gallatin Valley, the Bozeman area. So really handy. Um, there's not any equipment in this image, but uh, Nate used his small box manure spreader to get his windrows started the first time. So they've uh, coming out of the winter. They've got deep pack bedding and outdoor lots at this goat dairy. A lot of straw you know, uh, for warmth uh, through the Montana winter. So he's got a lot of material he really needs to break up, and he, he loads it into that manure spreader. It's the wagon he uses to get it out of the production area. He can break that material up, and he just makes his first pass of a windrow discharging from his manure spreader. Then he comes back with uh, his skid steer loader and pushes it up, and, uh, and that's how he gets his compost going for the year. Uh, once again, this is uh, from Nate's farm. Um, he built this himself. It's just angle iron, uh, expanded metal grating, bolts, washers, and a little bit of welding. And uh, anyway, it's part of his quality control for his commercial compost operation uh, from his goat dairy. And uh, some ear tags, baling twine, other trash that ends up getting kicked around. And uh, he puts those large pieces back in and, uh, and recomposts them with the next batch. So. This is something that's pretty new that I uh, found. It's, uh, I guess, originally from Australia. There's an importer on the East Coast, Mid-Atlantic area. I think it actually might be Pennsylvania. Um, you got in Pennsylvania, folks, there's a couple manufacturers of these small regular spreaders, and one of those companies is importing these from a foreign manufacturer. And uh, you see the, the volume there, and, as well as the price quotes. and. Uh, there's, these are on YouTube. You can watch them in action. It's it's pretty neat. Um, so I guess I've got a pretty small dog. If I had any bigger dog, I might get one from my backyard. But um, you know, and in some cases, some of these small farms are you know equine operations where the bottom line is not uh, the first factor. So it might be a tool they'd be interested in. But what about slurry and liquid? Um, I'm originally from Georgia and worked most of my extension career, or half my extension career down there. And there are a lot of, I don't know, John, the 1950s hog operations, those old half shed, and then, yeah, so these 
pretty small hog operations. I'd call them small farms, and they had uh, a slope concrete pad out of a little shed shelter. And uh, all those operations had small lagoons or slurry ponds. And uh, so they're small. Uh, they needed to deal with, with their waste. Most of them used like a large bore, you know, impact sprinkler or something, traveling gun system. Uh, those can be affordable for our smaller commercial production animal feeding operations. Um, Germany, Great Britain, Denmark, <clears throat> all those, uh, these small tankers are available in all those markets. I could not find where anybody had imported one to the U.S. Um, but, you know, there are different ways. Uh, not deep injection, but there are injection toolbars you could get for those, your regular splash plate, um, a variety of options on those uh, little tankers, but they're only uh, available in Europe, best I can tell right now. But perhaps in the near future, an option for our small farm clients. In many cases, um, especially when I find like I'm working with an equine neighborhood, like a residential development built around, you know, horse culture, and um, of course everybody has too many horses at their own lot, but then there might be central riding or training facilities. Um, you know, lease and shared ownership might be a really good option um, for those sorts of scenarios uh, where small farms or uh, uh, the hobby farms can combine resources. Option to borrow and rent, um, the, you know, the remaining RC&Ds around the country, many of them have a variety of equipment for, for rent and lease and some technical assistance on the nutrient management side at the same time. So a good option for our small farm clients there. and. Um, and then sometimes custom haulers. You know, Mike, I liked your example of the the guy that's built a business servicing those farms with the, the roll away and the the central composting facility. That's that's pretty interesting. And if the population dynamics work, that could be a, looks like a good business plan. And then this one is my favorite. Um, these are very prominent in uh, the small farm markets of Boulder, Bozeman, and Burlington. Um, this is a pre-2008 Subaru Outback with over a cubic yard of compost in it. And um, yeah, this was uh, headed back to, I think, like a, a CSA or a small commercial vegetable operation, but they had picked up all this steer manure compost at a, a community compost center. So anyway, with that, uh, there's another one of those toys from a diorama. but. Uh, any comments or questions? Do you think something like this would be useful when you engage small farm clientele? Um, did you get any new ideas your, yourself or when you're trying to write nutrient management plans for these sorts of folks? We're a little behind schedule, so let's just save questions for later. I have one question later. for you. On the, on the skidster attachment, how effective have you seen those? I've seen them where they you couldn't do a very big pile with them because they just didn't have quite the power to... Especially if it got real wet and kind of clumpy, it wouldn't, it wouldn't turn real well. Right. Um, my buddy Nate demoed one of those, and uh, his material was pretty dry and, and pretty friable, so he didn't have the the clumping uh, the clumping issues. But uh, there's some footage on YouTube of those as well. Um, I really don't have many observations to to comment on. It would certainly be lighter duty for sure. Right. I feel lighter. So, thank you, Tom. Yep.